Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to women and to men today. Today's topic might end up in a part two. And it's also a, a little bit controversial because it's a topic that's been a struggle um, between men and women. The women trying to find themselves and their place in the world. And the men also trying to find, okay, who am I even as a man? There's a struggle, there's a competition, we shouldn't be and all that. So it's a general talk, but then I'm narrowing it to the 21st century woman. The 21st century woman being empowered. First, I'm going to go to what a woman is not. A woman is not a second class citizen. A woman is not a punching bag. A woman is not a domestic slave. A woman is not a is not a sex slave. Just when you need her, that's when you go to her. That's not what a woman is. A woman is not just your cook. A woman is much more than that. A woman is not there just to bear your children. You know, a woman is much, much more than that. And there's a lot of conflict today now why do i say that before things were easier in those days let me talk about 50 60 years ago the woman understood her role in the marriage and the man understood his part things were easy it was not complicated the man understood that i need to go to work and bring the food home and then the woman knows she is her home to cook the food the man brings are you with me, ma? Yes, the the woman the woman knows that the man comes in, pregnant the woman, the woman gives birth, and she knows it's her duty, you know, to look after the baby. The man knows that it's his duty to provide for that baby, to to pay the tuition, the clothing, and everything. So it was simpler then, you know. But but then there's another disadvantage there. They didn't understand what romance was. It was a straight jacket thing. I know my role, you know your role. Everybody do their duty. They understood it. And then the woman respect the man for that. The love then was more based on respect. It was it's not the emotional one we get we all get carried away with today. It was more respect. Uh, I know my husband is capable to look after me and the home. And they were okay with it. And then the woman is also, the man is also, I know my wife is there looking after the home, making my food, looking after my children, my home is well kept. And he respects her for that. And they were okay with it. Even when it comes home, it's, you know, where's my food? Boom, eat. Then the next day, sex and bed. And then sleep off. The next day, the same routine. You know, there was no time for romance. Uh, we want to go dinner and all that. We want to go cinema. Oh, it's time to go for holiday. They didn't have all that. You know, and the woman understood my man is busy. It was, it's, it's, it's let me call it it's very simple. You know, and there was peace everywhere. And another thing was that there was less divorce like the one we have in today. We don't have so much divorce back then. Why? One of the reasons was because the man is the one providing for this woman. If she decides to leave the home, where is she going to go? Who's going to look after her? She does not have any income of her own. Who's going to take her in? Who's going to look after her and her children? So she has no choice but to stay in that marriage. Even where she's been abused, she stays in. Because where am I going to go? Who's going to look after me? How am I going to survive? So when a woman say, uh, uh, most of them are for it, yeah. What am I saying? When there's like, I want to endure, you know, to keep my home because of my children. 80% of it is because they don't have a choice. 80% is because they don't have anywhere to go. They don't have any income. Nowhere to go, but things are different now. 
women are now fighting to 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 be recognized to come back to being women a woman is much more than uh, like what our, our nigerian president said our place is in the kitchen or in the bedroom our place is not just there we are not limited to that even in the bible women are rather assisting jesus christ in his ministry women are out there you know working the farm back then women work women work now things got worse and the roles start changing you know and women get started getting more empowerment starting from infidelity when the men when there's an increase in infidelity and they end up probably going to another woman that's one on the side then the woman is like now nah, i don't have a choice the work she wasn't doing before now she has to do it no matter i mean she has no choice she has to hustle she has to whatever it's gonna take to look after herself and her children another one is debt untimely death of the husband if the husband's family cannot come up to support her then it falls on her to not be the man she becomes the wife the i mean she becomes the mother and the father to the children because the husband is dead or the husband has been taken away through infidelity by another woman then now the woman is now becomes everything back then we still we have single single parent we have single mothers but the difference is that it's not so much number one number two the family of the of the of the children's father must come around to support the woman i'm not i mean we have cases of where the family have been wicked they've even abused such women but i'm talking about majority and what it was then what it was meant to be the right thing to do then the husband's family they come in to support her you know because they know the the husband was the breadwinner and now he's gone either by death or by infidelity so they come around to help her they come around to support her that's another one then the third one that has really really affected um the western world today is second world war from the research i did now from this during the second world war all the men were out there fighting so the women were left alone at home with their children now at some point they needed to build more ammunition. They needed to build, uh, create more bullets. So the women were, were put all in the workforce, you know, to work the machinery to make more weapons. So the women started working. Now suddenly the women are the men. The war is over, and then the women, the the men got home, and they're like, "Where is my wife?" I mean, they're normally used to coming home and meeting their wife at home but suddenly where is the wife she's working okay and where is the food she's not there to cook the food and then the men are perplexed they're like okay where do i start from now what do i do where do i go they don't know what to do with themselves even the men today are confused that's where it all started from. So the women go and part, oh, I can work. I can do this. I can also bring money to the table. There's nothing stopping me from doing this. And things wouldn't have gotten this ugly, if I may use the word, if the way God has created it, it has been maintained. The, 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 men, it has, the men have not sat down like, these women are too powerful. What do we do to them? If they have not reduced them, to the kitchen and the bedroom to start with. Then this power tussle that we are struggling with today won't be there. Amen. Amen. Now, having said that, coming back to today's century, now, let me use myself as an example. I've got my house, I've got my car, I've got my job, I've got my money and everything. And then I need a man. The other way around, it used to be the men going for the women. Even then, when they go and say, okay, I want to marry your daughter or anything, the family is like, what do you have? 
So I have maybe two horses or a piece of land, you know. And then in some in some in some countries, I think even in Europe here, they is the woman that paid the the bride price to the man. You know, I mean, it's all this. It's it was based on stability back then. Are you stable? Are you can you look after this family? It was it was like a business contract. It wasn't I love you, I love you, and we'll be managing it anyhow. We see no, it let us know what we are getting into. So I know what you have, you know where I'm coming from. Frocker, I know that your your father is, is a rich man or is a baron, and you are also maybe um related to the prince. So I know my future is secured. End of story. So it was not love, love, love. It was mutual respect because why? You can meet my needs. And then the respect builds to love. Love and respect work together. You cannot tell me you love me and you don't respect me. So when there is respect, the love begins to build. You know, and, and, and that works for them. But now we are more demanding. Like I was saying, I have everything and now I need a man. And then the man is like, okay, you need me. Okay, um, I'll provide you a home. I already have a home. So why are you going to provide for me? I'll buy you a car. I already have a car. I'll give you money. Money, I've got enough of that. So the man is confused. So what do I give you? <laughs> You know, so it, it's 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 quite a pity though, because now a lot of men are struggling, because they, they they are now confused. They don't even know what is their role as the man, what is expected of them as the man, because the woman's got it all. So what am I bringing to the table? What am I bringing to the table? What do I want to give up? So they now fall back on their strength, relying on their strength. And that is why a lot of men now go into physical abuse or even mental abuse or sexual abuse because they are frustrated. They have this feeling of, oh, uh, she's got everything. It's like uh, they feel useless. They feel incompetent. Inferiority complex begins to set in. But you need to really understand the 21st century woman. If you do not understand the woman and you're still believing in the in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 50s, and you want to use that ideology of the old woman to deal with the 21st century woman, it's not gonna work. So I really I really pray that this program will be shared to a lot of men, it will be shared out there so the men can benefit from it. Now, the 21st century woman is not going to go back to be the 30th century woman. It's not going to happen. So we need to accept what is on board. And then how do we work on it and how do we make it even better? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we make it better? So the, the man now, out of that frustration, out of the inferiority complex, you, you, you see the man ending up abusing the woman because he feels she's got everything i feel useless what am i doing here you know but then that's not what is your role as a man let's go back into the bible your role does not end up only in providing food you are also the protector of the home that's your number one you are the godhead in that home you are the Godhead. After Christ, it's you. So you are the prayer warrior. But things have changed now. The men believe the woman is the prayer warrior. You go and pray and fast for us. Don't worry. But that's not what the Bible says. You are the Godhead in that home. So as the Godhead, so you are the spiritual head. But that's not what we have today. The women are the one fasting, doing all the praying. The women are the one mostly in the churches, in the mosque, and everywhere. Yes. That have turned around. And then we're wondering where is the balance? Where has things gone wrong? If you look into the Bible, this is going to be a shocker. And a lot of people are probably going to punch me for it. Back then, men cook. 
But today, it's not, oh no, it's not my job to cook. It's a woman's role to cook. Because why we've been subjected to that. Because the woman wanted to be controlled. Because people come to see how powerful a woman is. I mean, if, so if, if Solomon could say in Proverbs that be careful of that woman. She's, and do not give her a strength because she's a, bring da, a bringer down of kings and kingdoms. A woman can bring down any man. A woman can bring down any kingdom. A woman is powerful. It's, a woman is not somebody you punch. A woman is a carrier of words. We give back to words. We give back to kings. We give back to, and name it. Now, God saw us fit. God saw us worthy. God, I mean, God could decide. He, he, he created everything. He could decide to make the man the same person who bring forth. But he chose us. Not because we are weaker vessels. Physical strength we may not have like the man. But what we have is much more. And that is why the two of us come together to complement each other. Am I still on board, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. You know, so we, we're there to complement each other. So I come with my wisdom. I come with my ideas. You come with your physical strength, you know, and then we have everything blissful. But the first role of the man is to be the Godhead in the house. So your purpose is not only to provide. Let's stop getting it wrong. Now, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, in John cooked. Now John chapter 21. If you look into the account from 21, yeah, but 12 15. You know, Jesus cooked for the disciples. I'm not talking about the miracles now. When 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 the disciples were trying to catch some fish, they couldn't. He came, have you caught any fish there? Throw your net there. And they said, Come over. I've already made made enough food here. Come and eat. Jesus cooked. So why can't our men cook? Why can't they cook? It's not my job. You have to go to the kitchen. Hello. If our Lord and our Savior can cook and you are a Christian, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Why can't you cook? Why should it only be the, the, woman? the 21st century woman goes to work, does the shopping, not only your money with her money as well. Comes back home and cook, cleans the house, looks after the children, and then in the night again, he said, Hello, Coco, -co, can I come in? And then she still wakes up in the night or very early in the morning, children come, let us pray. So, where are you? First of all, you are the shepherd. That's what the Bible calls it, the man. You are the shepherd of your home, not just the shepherd of a church. Everyone cannot be a shepherd in the church, but your first up, uh, job is to be the shepherd in the home. So how many times have you called your family together for prayer? How many times have you preached to your children? It's easy to hold the microphone and preach, but how many do you do in your home? How many times have you said, kids, come on, let's go and cook? If you look into Genesis 25, 27, the story of Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, Jacob and Esau, they know how to cook. If they were not a good cook, number one, when he, um, Jacob was the one cooking and Esau came and said, can I have some of your porridge? And then says, you send me your bad right? I will give you. So he's a man and he was a good cook. He did not only wait or depend on the mother's food. Meaning also, even we as women, we need to teach our children how to cook. I have two boys. I don't have any girl. So what do I do? They know how to clean. They know how to cook. They know how to do shopping. They have to know how to do everything. So don't say, this is the job of a man. This is the job of a woman. Things are not like that. It was not like that originally. It's not even like that now anymore. The woman is confused trying to be, okay, what is my role? And that is why you see a lot of issue going on now. The woman is trying to be the man. The man is trying to be the woman. 
And that even he now goes to, I'm not sure if I'm a lesbian or if I'm gay. There's so much confusion going everywhere. And the man too is like, okay, I think I like to cook. So because I like to cook, because I like to tidy the house, I think I'm a woman. What a life from the pit of hell. The Bible never separated these duties. It is we, human, that brought segregation, separation, division. But we need to come back to what the word of God says, which is going to be a tough one. That's why I say it's a controversial one. We need to come back to the basics. Because many are going to tell me, oh no, that is wrong. But it's the truth. It is the truth. And we have a lot of single mothers today. And a single mother is the father. She's the breadwinner. She's the, the children's advisor. The, she's, she's their best friend. You know, she's their tutor. She's their counselor. She's their everything. And then a man that comes and says, you want to marry such a single mother. Number one, you need to have a broad heart though. You need to really, really know you are, you are marrying a man like yourself, number one, to start with, in quotes. Because whatever you can do, she has been doing it. So you cannot come around and not say, I can, woman, sit down. Or woman, if she can't sit down, oh, she'll just die. Because she's used to being out there. She's walking, she's hustling, she's, okay, children, are we eating? Take the food from the microwave, I'll be home in five minutes, I need to take my car to the mechanic. She's everywhere. So you know, just, just come around and then you want to change our life or turn things around. It's not going to work. So you need to understand, okay, I'm marrying a woman like a man. So we need to relate as colleagues, which is what the foundation was anyway. God never said a woman is a man is superior than the woman. It's not written anywhere in the Bible. It's not. It's all politics that has been pushed into the Bible. That's another topic for another day. Let's not go into that one now. Hallelujah. There's nowhere in the Bible I'm going to emphasize it again that says a woman has to be the cook. Even why I said. Esau and Jacob were good cook. Even when Isaac was dying, Isaac said, I want to eat from my son. I want to eat the food Esau, my son, cooked. Before it was stripped out of it by the mom and Jacob. So both men knew how to cook. And Jesus humbled himself, even as he humbled himself to death, he said humbled himself to cook for his disciples. He also washed their feet. Now, we talk about humility, we talk about being humble, it also goes for love. When there is genuine love and respect, there will be humility. Between a man and a woman. If you love your man and you respect your man, you will be humble woman. No matter what you have, no matter what you carry, no matter the money you have, no matter the status you have, you will bring yourself down to look after your man. Because your man, no matter when you get married, either after having all your children or was your first love, your husband becomes your first child. Because you are a mother. Even your husband may be older than you, you are still a mother. That's one of the strengths of the woman. A woman is a mother, no matter the age. That reminds me, I've been talking about relationship as far back I was in secondary school. Wow. You know, not knowing I'm still going to end up doing this even more and more. And maybe I hear two women talking about a man. And I'm going, I'm sorry, auntie, can I say something? And I start advising. And they're like, what do you know, Sabi? What do you know? You know, what do you know you're putting your mouth here? Who, who, who even put your mouth for this talk even? You know, and it happens so often. Even when somebody's nursing their baby, I'm like, can I help you? I'll carry the baby. I'll wrap her. And they're like, you don't burn. I said, no, but I've seen my mom do it. I've seen my cousins or somebody do it. You watch and learn. So naturally, we are mothers. We have this caring attitude. But today, a woman 
they're putting their feet down and saying, no, enough is enough. We're not going to be pushed to the kitchen. We're not going to be relegated as a slave. I'm not going to be abused. I mean, a woman who's got everything, a man slaps her, she will slap back. But what time you leave? I have my house, I have my home. You're not feeding me, so what is the problem? You know? And then they say, ah, she has pride. She's not humble. She, because she has more money, she's carrying her shoulder up. But it is, she, why should you slap her? Is that why God gave her to you to be slapped? Maybe another time we'll talk about the power of a woman spiritually. If you understand what a woman carries, you will not raise your hand to slap her. And the, the irony of it is that when this evil occurs between a man and a woman, we forget that the children are going to be the at the receiving end. And the residue of this problem is going to fall on them. Physically, the grass is in trouble. We forget, and the, the two elephants are headlocked. But big, 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 big. What about the grass? You know? So, whatever we do, especially when children are involved, we need to be extra, extra, extra careful. The 21st century woman is here to stay. The 21st century woman is a go-getter. May I say, the 21st century woman should stop competing. There is nothing to compete for. Because the moment you are competing with a man, you are already telling the man the man is bigger than you. So you want to prove to the man that me too I did here. There's nothing to compete. You're not competing with the man at all. It's not a competition. But rather, you are saying, by the grace of God, I have the enablement to do this. And with understanding, you pursue your dream. The 21st century woman has dreams, has goal, has vision. And they want to achieve. Now, when the Bible talks about we have all been called, the Bible did not call only the man. Bible called all E. Because he has died for all of us. He has saved all of us. He paid the price for all of us. And when he said, go ye into the world, in Matthew, and preach, he's not talking to only the man. Salvation is individual. Salvation is personal. So let's leave the tradition that we have created that is not biblical. Some is biblical because why? Politics have added it to it. But I'm trying to encourage the woman out there today that you are you have been strengthened by God. You have the potential in you to be everything and anything you want to be. But what you will not be is that you will not be a proud woman. What you will not be is not that you will not control because a lot of women control men. They manipulate men. Why? Because, okay, maybe like the example I gave, I have my money in my car and everything and I need the man. And then the man comes to start living with you. A lot of, a lot of women abuse men. They make them feel so bad that, I mean, look at what is happening in America today. A lot of women are being killed. I mean, our own people for that matter. Husbands are killing their wives. Because, I mean, most of them, at least out of 10 or 9 cases that I've read, they paid their visa, brought them into the state. They sent them to nursing school. I mean, these men have labored for you. They've tried their best for you. They've done what the Bible asked them to do to make you a person yourself. They are not saying, just come and sit down there and be cooking for me. But they've tried to make you your own person to give you a purpose in life. And then the moment you started counting that ego, you're like, what? I can't, but I'm tired. I can't cook for you. I'm tired. I can't do this. I understand the fact that even men have to create a balance. You also know nursing job is very, very tiring. Standing on your feet for hours. She's already naked. There's nothing wrong in you. You also say, oh, my dear, I've made some food for you as well. There's nothing wrong in saying, you know what? I know you're tired. Let's just order some food. 
That's what I mean about the man understanding the 21st century woman and creating a balance. It's not every day she will be, have the strength to cook. But she also needs to create the balance that it's not you're not working 24-7. Neither are you working seven days a week. So the days you are not working, you are looking after the home. The days you are not working, you are doing shopping, you are you know, preparing stuff in the house. So even when you come back from work, you can easily put things together. Two minutes, three minutes, there's food. So we all need to create a balance. Amen. What I'm going to add to this is, wherever God has placed you, understand your purpose in Christ. And with the fear of the Lord. Because if you have the fear of the Lord, you will not beat your wife. If you have the fear of the Lord, you will not abuse your husband. If you have the fear of the Lord, you know, we are all human. We tend to get angry. It's natural. But we also must understand limits and when to stop. And when we've done wrong, just like we go to God, God, I have sinned, forgive me. We also need to be able to say, I am sorry. I didn't mean to be angry. I didn't mean to shout out. You raise my voice. I was tired. We get tired. We get cranky. You know, not even for somebody who is a hustler like me. That sometimes I take it out on my children. And my son was like, Mom, are you all right? What's wrong? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Don't talk to me. Don't come to my room. Just leave me alone. You know, and when I'm much better, I'm like, guys, are you okay? Sorry about the other time. Well, there's nothing wrong with you as a mother telling your children sorry. By telling them sorry, you're also teaching them to say sorry. A lot of women or a lot of mothers don't say sorry to their children. There are times we even beat them out of our own frustration. Maybe something, well, I'm done. they have done something wrong. Yes. But on a good day, it's something we probably would have just chastised them with, with words. But probably because you were angry or you were tired or you have your own issues you're dealing with, you just give them some serious abuja bosa. And they'll be like, what have I done to deserve such slap? But there's nothing wrong in also coming back to ourselves and saying, son, I'm sorry. I was just upset. But what you did was not nice. Next time, don't talk to me like that or don't do that. I'm sorry for slapping you. You know, let's because we when we're building all these things bit by bit, we make we what we build in them when they are children is what they're gonna do when they get old. You see, a man that is abusing a woman today, look at the family the man is coming from. It's either the man has been abused himself, or he's seen the father abusing the mom, and he believes that is the okay thing. When your children are home, do they help you in the house? If they don't help you in the house, and then you expect them to help your wife, to, to help their wife. A lot of things have gone wrong. But we can start from now to make changes, to make amendments. So the generation God is putting in our hands now, let us teach them the right thing. Let them make them understand that you are the man in the house not be only because you provide first of all you are the godhead in that home so spiritually you should be the spiritual cover stop putting that responsibility in the hands of the woman you want to be the head you want to be respected then do the right thing not only money because the woman who can provide money the woman is an accountant she's a specialist She's flying the plane. She's engineer. She's everything. So what is your money? So let's let's stop putting the focus on I'm the breadwinner. It's not working anymore. But finding a purpose, the man's purpose, in 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 in, in according to what the Bible says. There's a difference from responsibility and purpose. That's another topic for another day. God bless you, man. Oh, yeah. mm.
Hallelujah.